praise the Lord once again. And uh, uh, I want just to say that the Lord is good and he has been faithful unto us all this time. And uh, we ought to give him praise and thanks for the things that uh, he is doing for us. We do not yet know what it shall be like, but when he appears, we shall be like him. And so we give him thanks and praise that uh, the very theme and uh, the very purpose of the redemption plan is that man may be restored unto the image of God. And so welcome to this number eight in our presentation. And that is uh, the title, The Fullness of the Time. And so shall we pray as we go into our presentation. Abba Father, glory and honor be unto thy name. Thank you for accepting us in thy son, Lord. We pray that uh, as even we look at the things that pertains to our lives, that we shall not be careless, but we shall be diligent, knowing that uh, you are a rewarder of them that seek thee diligently. Accord us your Holy Spirit as we seek your presence and as we seek to know you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I say it's a, a privilege to be able to learn the word of God while there's still time of peace. For there are nations where you can't be able to listen to the word of God peacefully without hearing a gunshot, without hearing uh, the cries outside and uh, everything going on. But uh, if we are able to sit in the presence of God and be able to listen to the word of God in a peaceful way without any distraction, then we must be blessed. And so let us take that uh, as an, uh, a bonus unto us, unlike others who cannot be able to listen to the word of God uh, peacefully. Uh, the fullness of the time, at uh, the fullness of the time, I'll start with Council to the Churches, page 77.1, as we go through this presentation in the fullness of the time, because the word of the Lord do not lie. Uh, in the past, it has been fulfilled, and uh, in the near future, everything that has been written concerning his second coming shall be fulfilled. Our God has heaven and earth at his command, and he knows just what we need. We can see only a little way before us. Above the destructions of the earth, he sits and throne. All things are open to his divine survey and from his great and calm eternity, he orders that which his providence sees best. And so at the fullness of the time, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, we had a prophecy, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall, be, shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from all, from everlasting. And then in Galatians 4.4, 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. When you hold your Bible and go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, I want us to see something in the book of Romans chapter 8. We are told in the fullness of the time Christ came. And if he appeared the first time as it was prophesied in his word, then you can be so sure that uh, he will appear on time during his second coming. And uh, the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, I want to read a very encouraging scripture. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 8. We are told that... Uh, 
for what the law could not do, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so in the fullness of the time, uh, Christ came to die for the ungodly. Now, greater love has no other. Let us just go some couple of uh, chapters before that in the book of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, we are seeing that in the fullness of the time he came, and there is a reason he came for Romans chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, in the fullness of the time, that time once again, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Praise the Lord. And so we find that uh, in due time, in the fullness of the time, Christ came and died for you and me when we were yet without strength. Meaning when he dies, we do not continue to remain without strength and weak, but now he gives us the strength because um, we are told the, the previous uh, verse we read that um, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. So you find the aspect of weakness before Christ dies for us. Now he came in a sinful flesh and for sin and condemned sin in the flesh. And the person that condemns sin in the flesh means that he has gained strength or he is stronger. Because before the strength comes, he is weak in the flesh and he cannot attain to righteousness. But then we are told when we were weak, Christ died for us. And for what reason? So that he may condemn sin in the flesh, which means we shall be given strength to condemn sin in the flesh. In which way, look at the book of Romans chapter 8 once again. For they that are after the flesh do not do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity or the weak flesh is enmity against God the weakness, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of us. Because it is the spirit that condemns sin in this flesh. The flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so Christ gives us the strength in the spirit so that we may condemn the sin in the flesh. That is why he appeared in the fullness of time. At the lowest point of humanity, when humanity had been degraded by sin for 6,000 years, Christ comes and for what purpose? to give us the spirit. And we are told that the spirit we have been given, Romans chapter eight and uh, verses 13. 
For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Through the spirit, if you can slay the desires of the flesh, you shall live. For as many as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. I'll try and look at uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. 2 Timothy 1.7. We are seeing why Christ in due time, in the fullness of the time, he appeared on this face of the earth. Uh, look at uh, the book of 2 Timothy, and I'm reading from my Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Follow along your Bible. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When men were being led by the appetites of the flesh and it seemed like this earth is going to collapse under the burden of sin, Christ appeared. And for what reason? To give unto those who believe the spirit so that they may condemn sin in the flesh. And so Paul says in the book of Galatians, Turn to the book of Galatians chapter 2. This is a, a familiar verse, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20. We are looking at the fullness of the time he came and for what reason. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the life I live is the life of Christ. Continuing on in Galatians chapter 5. Verse uh, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law and so you are not condemned you are not under the condemnation and the power of being condemned by the law for you are in the spirit and whoever has the spirit of the son then he is the son of god uh the book of john chapter one we are just uh Looking at this verse and the why Christ in the fullness of the time came, people wonder why did he come at such a time as that? When you study your scriptures well, you will find that it had uh, uh, Israel had plunged in self, itself in darkness. The sacrificial system were being uh, the sacrificial system was being profaned by these people. And people had given up on any restoration in this world. But in the fullness of the time Christ came, John chapter 1, verses uh, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now. Go to the book of Hebrews again. Hebrews and uh, the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter. The 
like to look at the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. For what reason did he appear? It is because man had reached at the point of breaking. There was nothing to salvage in man. And so he appeared on time. But for what reason? Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without support to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And so the appearance of Christ in the fullness of the time, at the very hour he was needed, made sure the destruction of him who had the keys of death and hell. We are told in Galatians 4, 4, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And so at, at that point, in fact, we are told in, um, if you check uh, Steps to Christ, uh, page uh, 51, we are told that uh, you believe that promise, page 51, you confess your sins and give yourself to God. You will to serve him just as surely as you do this, God will fulfill his word to you. And what is his word to you? That he will atone for your sins. So do not wait to feel that you are made whole, but say, I believe it, it's so, not because I feel it, but because God has promised. He who promised to give his son and at the right time gave him has promised us the strength and none is so vile, none has fallen so low that uh, he can find deliverance in Christ. So uh, our work, now that Christ has appeared, in the book of Desire of Ages, page 32, paragraph 1, we read, but like the stars in the vast circuit of the appointed path, God's purpose know no haste and no delay. Uh, through the symbols of the great darkness and the smoking furnace, God has revealed to Abraham the bondage of Israel in Egypt and had declared that the time of their sojourning should be 430 years. Afterward, he said, shall they come out with great substance in Genesis 15, 14. So in heaven's counsel, the hour for the coming of Christ had been determined. When the great clock of time pointed to that hour, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Now you can see that connection between the children of Israel in the land of Egypt and in the hour of darkness. Christ took them from the land of bondage. In the first coming of Jesus Christ, the Jewish people were under the Roman yoke. They were under paganism. They were under heathenism. And they were under all this sort of stuff of darkness. But in due time, Christ was revealed and manifested amongst his people so that he may remove the yoke. When you go to the book of uh, John chapter four, you find what was happening at that point. The book of John chapter four, and then I'll go to the book of Acts. I tell you, if there is something that has ever embraced and embraced my mind is this issue of the fullness of the time. And we have to believe that uh, Christ has lifted us from the bondage of this world and sat us in heavenly places with his father. Um, the book of Luke chapter four, and I want to look at um, the verse is verse 18. I hope that you have your Bible and you are following along. In the fullness of the time he came and for what reason we are looking at that. Um, the book of um, Luke chapter 4, verses 18, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty them that are bruised, verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so he came and for the very purpose of opening eyes, healing and setting the captives at, uh, at liberty and then um, preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. And uh, you understand that uh, they have been waiting for Jesus Christ for so long. In fact, when you go to Acts chapter 1, the book of Acts chapter 1, we are reading the word of the Lord, which is the power unto salvation. The book of uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The enemy had usurped it, as we see the enemy has taken over the world. The church, which has to be the light of the world, it seems that it has been uh, uh, um, uh, 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 really consumed uh, or uh, obliterated by the sins of the world. It's, it's no longer seen. And uh, at the appointed time, at the right time, Jesus Christ came for the first time and uh, he was able to free those who are in captive. Now, at that time, they were waiting for Jesus Christ, a lot to come and take them out of this bondage. You can read that in the book of Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 32. Let us look at the book of Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 32. We are told, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So at the right time he came. And from the lineage of David, and he was given the throne of David. And now Christ is ministering as a high priest of the better things that were to come and ready to establish his kingdom, which uh, will never come to an end. And so the subjects of this kingdom are being made up. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 21, concerning his coming, this is what Ezekiel had uh, written, the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 21, verses 26, Ezekiel 21, and uh, we are looking at verses uh, 26. Thus saith the Lord, God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I'll overturn, 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 and it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I'll give it to him. And so there was no other king in Israel to save them from the yoke that they were having. In fact, the princes, in verse 25, they had done uh, wickedly and they had done iniquity, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 25. And so it was only the Messiah that was to come and uplift the cloud or remove the cloud that was hanging over Israel. At the fullness of the time, what uh, a beautiful way uh, to read the sanctuary message. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, providence, and had directed the movements of nations and the tide of human impulse and influence until the world was ripe for the coming of the deliverer. The nations were united under one government. One language was widely spoken and was everywhere recognized as the language of literature. You see how the forces of evil had really combined 
to make sure that uh, this world will never ever see the light of heaven once again. And so when the disciples were walking to a mouse, they said, and they reasoned amongst them, Christ did not come and uh, Christ did come and perform his work as he had been laid out in the prophecies and the typical feast, but they didn't understand. They had preconceived ideas. They didn't pay attention, distracted with preeminent. They didn't believe, couldn't hear Christ's words. And you find them lamenting in Luke chapter 24, verse 21, but we trusted that he, it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and beside all this. Today is the third day sin. these things were done. And so um, what was done in Ephesians 1, 3, uh, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This is what Christ in the fullness of time came to do, to bless us and to choose us. In Ephesians 1, 5, he says, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7 of Ephesians 1, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, and when you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 12, Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 13, sorry. In whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you, you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. These are the things that in the fullness of the time he came to do. He had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And in James chapter one, verses five, he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and he'll be given. Uh, Christ who does not withhold it will give unto him liberally. So in the fullness of the time, Jesus came and what did he do? He came to bless us, he chose us, he predestined us, he accepted us, he redeemed us, he forgave us, and he abounded with wisdom uh, toward us. There is nothing that he didn't cover in his first coming. And now in the times that we are living in, we can enjoy the merits of the finished work at Calvary, the sacrificial atonement. Christ knew what he did on the cross. He fulfilled all the spring types. His work was accomplished once and for all time. The sacrificial atonement is complete. In John 19, 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now let us try to unpack the whole thing that he came for the first time to fulfill the feasts of the spring, which were the feast of the Passover, which was a commemoration of um, the deliverance from Egypt and a future look into the deliverance from the force and the enemies and the whole conspiracy and um, association of uh, Babylon. And so the Passover looks back into the deliverance from Egypt and it looks forward to the deliverance from all the enemies of Christ. So he fulfilled the Passover and we can uh, really um, enjoy the benefits of the Passover that he fulfilled. He was the unleavened bread. That means that uh, we celebrate the feast without the leaven in it, without any malice, but in sincerity and in truth. So he had victory over sin, and we can enjoy that victory. And then he fulfilled the feast of the first fruits, which means that uh, death could not hold him. And those who sleep in Christ, death shall never hold them down here, but they shall resurrect because our life is hid 
in Jesus Christ, and then he was able to fulfill the feast of the weeks, what you call the Pentecost. And uh, that was the priest to bless the people for the harvest of the first fruits in the barley harvest and which the breads were made and waved before uh, the Lord. And so we can understand that uh, we shall be joined with our Lord wherever he is. In fact, Revelation 22 says this, the book of Revelation 22, is it verse 4? The book of Revelation chapter 22, verses uh, 4. The first fruits were presented before the priest. And then the breads that were made from this barley were as the trophies that also were given to the priest. And so we shall be able to see our Lord. We shall be able to dwell with him in Revelation 22 verse 4. It says, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. Why? Because Christ was able to come at the right time and fulfill that which the law required and then give us that victory in Zechariah. Is it Zechariah chapter 2, verse 13? I presume the book of Zechariah that uh, we shall be able to dwell with our God because of the accomplished work of uh, Christ. Uh, uh, not the My let me give you the verse uh, that uh, he shall That is uh, the book of Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17, not chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17. We read that uh, Zechariah chapter, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Zephaniah, not Zechariah, Zephaniah 3, 17. We read, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And uh, this is because of the accomplished work uh, at Calvary, the spring feast being accomplished. These are the benefits we are finding that uh, they were accomplished when Christ came. Well, then might the angels rejoice as they looked upon the Savior's cross for Though they did not then understand all, they knew that the destruction of sin and Satan was forever made certain at the fullness of the time, that the redemption of man was assured, and that the universe was made eternally secure. Christ himself fully comprehended the results of the sacrifice made upon Calvary. To all this he looked forward when upon the cross he cried out, it is finished. Finished. What is this that uh, is finished? The battle is over. There will be no more war. The end of conflict. Jesus is the Lord and every knee shall bow down before him and say he is the Lord. And even though it doesn't seem like that as we speak right now, but friends, you have to believe it shall be so because Death did not hold him in the grave, but he burst forth from the tomb and is sat beside his father in heaven. And so in Hebrews 9, 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Again, the fullness of the time will come. The nations will be gathered and their intelligence will be flowing. God's organized church will be again rich uh, will re again reach the zenith of its apostasy, but again the stars will shine those who have accepted him as the Messiah. And so that is why we are told in the book of 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, and look at uh, verses 1 and 2 and 3. 
Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And every man that hath he, this hope, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And so Christ has given us that victory. In Ephesians 1.10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And we talked about the efficacy of the angels, the inhabitants of the unfallen world and humanity. What Christ came to do is to gather all things unto him, that God may gather all things unto him in Christ by the efficacy of the cross. In Revelation chapter 18, verse uh, 5, we find that the sins, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. So you find that um, uh, uh, Christ, when uh, this world will be at its peak of plans to destroy Christianity, again Christ will come at uh, the appointed time. The sin of ancient Israel was in this, uh, this, uh, regarding the expressed will of God and following their own way according to the leadings of unsanctified hearts. Modern Israel are first following in their footsteps and the displeasure of the Lord is as sure resting upon them. In which way? Christ, as just he promised he will come the first time and came, but people were plunged into um, what we may call unbelief. So even at this time, we find that um, uh, people are in unbelief and they have uh, retreated, retreated back to Egypt and they are uns unconsecrated and strife exists among the people of God as never before. It's like um, the promise that he will come again has escaped the minds of many, just as it escaped the children of Israel at that time. And so modern Israel are in greater danger of forgetting the promises of God, even as the ancient Israel really forgot about God and gathered about them idols. They went about polluting the Sabbath. They went about creating walls of partition. And when Christ came the first time, you had these five groups of um, the Jewish sects, which each one of them was contending for supremacy. You can see that even amongst uh, independent ministries, self-supporting ministry, each one wants the supremacy. They have forgotten that they have to be servants of each other and not lords over uh, each other. And so, we are told that blessed is that servant whom the Lord shall find giving meat in due season to others. Now, uh, look at the book of Luke chapter 12 again. Luke, the book of Luke chapter 12. And... Uh, I'll read from verses 42 to verses 48. The book of Luke, chapter 12, I'm reading from verses 42 to 48. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say into his heart, my Lord delayed his coming and shall begin to beat the main servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and to be drunken, 
the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at a time and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. And so you find that um, there are people who say that my Lord delayeth in coming. My Lord delayeth in coming. But uh, at the time they say peace, peace, sudden destruction shall come. And so the modern Israel are urged to lay aside their ornaments, their jewels of silver and gold and precious stone to put off their costly apparel and to seek the inward adorning even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Let the children be educated not to become devotees of fashion, but to be the servants of God. We should live in this world as sojourners and not a people who are here to uh, stay forever. We should live in this place as strangers. Peter tells us in 2 Peter 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And to whom shall it come as a thief in the night? To those who don't believe what has been written. He came uh, and his own did not receive him. And he will come. And those who are professing, they know about his coming. They will not receive him because they don't know uh, what in reality it means, the coming of Christ. First of all, he must come in our hearts so that when he is revealed in the clouds of the air, we may be able to understand that he is. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 42, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord cometh or doth come, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he will have watched and will not have suffered his house to be broken up, to be broken up. And so that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is fast spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of God. And why are we admonished like this? Because in the fullness of the time he came, and he came to give us the strength to be able to live in the presence of a holy God without anything that defileth. But ye brethren, you are not in darkness that that night, that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. While we are not to know the hour of our Lord's return, we may know when it is near. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 to 6. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, draweth nigh. And what are these things when you see the world entering into darkness, when you see uh, 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 darkness covering the whole earth, that is the time that even our light should shine the most. That is the time that uh, our light should shine the most. Let us go as we look at the last uh, verse and quote in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 60. He says, when you see these things, know that it is near even. Uh, at the doors. What these things, the calamities, the church getting into darkness, and the things that were prophesied concerning his second coming, if you see them, know that uh, he is near even at the doors. And uh, we, we looked at the sanctuary, and that is what we are continuing to look at, the tabernacles, the various articles in them, the feast therein, the spring feast, and uh, the autumn feast, or the fall feast, uh, the spring feast showing us the first coming of Jesus Christ and the fall feast showing us the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so we are studying the implications of all these things 
so that we may not have just a head knowledge of debts, but we have must we may have an experience of um, the compacted prophecy that was given to Israel, even the sanctuary. And so when you see these things, when you see people, the wicked becoming more wicked, this is what we are told in Isaiah chapter 60, 60 arise, shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather to themselves together. They come to thee, their sons, they, thy sons shall be come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. And so it is a time that the church arose from her slumber and out of her darkness so that they may share in the benefits of the spring feast as we continue in the uh, a feast of the fall. Now, what is Christ waiting? Christ is waiting with a longing manifestation of a revelation of himself in his church. When his character shall be reproduced perfectly in his people, then he shall come to claim them as his own. That is the book of Revelation chapter 14. The last verse, the book of Revelation chapter 14. Let us look at the third angel's message, what Christ is uh, waiting for. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. It is good to hear the Bible pages turn. Revelation 14. Look at uh, verse 13, verse 14, I mean. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Now there's, there are two reaping in the book of Revelation chapter 14, from verses 14 to verses 20. The first reaping is the reaping of those who are ready, the mature church, those who have overcome sin. Because when you go to the second reaping from verse 17 to 20, it talks about the sharp sickle thrusting in and the clusters of the vine uh, of the earth for her grape were fully ripe. And then Jesus trod the vine of the earth and the wine press with the wrath of God. So this is not the harvest of the righteous. It is the harvest of the wicked. So he starts with the harvest of the righteous, and then he follows with the harvest of the wicked. And so Christ is not waiting for anything else to happen, but his church to be ready to receive him. Then he will come to pick them as his own. The last thing that uh, I will share is this. What was the problem of uh, the ancient Israel and what is our problem? What are the lessons to learn in the feasts of the spring? We who are living in the fall feast, what are we to learn from the spring feast at the fullness of the time? What happened and how can we learn from them? We want to understand the times that, uh, the times in which we live, we do not have, understand it. We do not have to take it in. My heart trembles in me when I think of what a foe we have to meet and how poorly we are prepared to meet him. That uh, we are not yet ready to meet uh, this foe that uh, we are uh, when Jesus Christ is revealed in the clouds of uh, the air. We are told the trials of the children of Israel and their attitude just before 
the first coming of Christ has been presented before me again and again to illustrate the position of the people of God in the experience before the second coming of Christ, how the enemy sought every occasion to take control of the minds of the Jewish, and today he is seeking to blind the minds of God's servant that they may not be able to discern the precious truth. Uh, I'm really praying that um, we may not uh, fulfill the prophecy in uh, a negative way as uh, the children of Israel fulfill the prophecy. But uh, as they were people who benefited in the spring feasts and they accepted Jesus Christ in the fullness of the time, so also we who are living in the fall feast, we may accept him and not be part of those who will fulfill the prophecy in a negative way. So may we understand the times that we are living in, that it is in the fullness of time of receiving the righteousness of Jesus Christ under the third angel's message so that uh, we may be able to enter into the Holy of Holies with him and abide with the Father. Those who accepted them, him in the courtyard were able to enter with him in the holy place. Those who will accept him during this day of atonement, they will be able to enter into rest with him. And so may the Lord bless us and may we understand what it means in the fullness of the time. In every dispensation, there is the fullness of time, which the people of God have to realize and enter into that dispensation with Jesus Christ and share in the benefits of his uh, mediatorial work. And so may the Lord bless us as we continue thinking about um, these things. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thou hast never failed in your word. And we understand that uh, whether heavens or the earth fails, your word will never fail. And so help us to believe in this word, just as those who believe it were able to share in the benefits of the fullness of the time in the courtyard. May we also understand it in the most holy place that uh, at the time of visitation, we may understand our times. Not like Israel who rejected and uh, they could not be gathered as a hen gathered her chicks. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are speaking to us. Do not only give us information, but give us the strength to be able to walk in the things that we learn in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.